Welcome, everyone, to another gripping episode. Today, we peer into the shadows of trust and friendship, exploring the chilling stories of individuals who were betrayed and tragically met their end at the hands of those they considered friends. Join us as we navigate through the unsettling narratives of deception, crime, and the shattering of once unbreakable bonds. In the neon-lit streets of Las Vegas, a friendship between two teenagers, Jared Whaley and Matt Baker, would descend into the shadows of a chilling nightmare. Their shared experiences as outsiders brought them together, their lives intertwined with crime, substance abuse, and a fascination with cinematic mob fantasies. Little did they know that their camaraderie would spiral into a gruesome plot that would haunt their community. Jared and Matt, products of single-parent households, found themselves in the vast expanse of Las Vegas after relocating from California. Left to navigate the city's chaos while their mothers worked, the two teenagers embarked on a tumultuous journey, grappling with the challenges of identity and fitting into a society that often left them to their own devices. The stark contrast in their personalities, with Matt's reserved nature and Jared's confrontational demeanor, forged a unique bond. Weightlifting sessions became a regular escape, and their friendship expanded into a clique they dubbed The Crew. Amidst the glitz of Las Vegas, they sought solace at the enigmatic Drinking Hill, a place where beer, weed, and adolescent dreams collided. The crew's activities ranged from rebellious acts like robbing grocery stores for alcohol to indulging in the allure of gangster movies. While the entire group found fascination in the cinematic underworld, Matt's infatuation with characters like Michael Corleone and Nicky Santoro grew into an obsession, leading him to model his life after the shadows of organized crime. As Matt's mafia fantasies intensified, fueled by rejection from a girl he admired, the crew's dynamic shifted. They transformed from petty criminals to wannabe tough guys, with Matt yearning for a feared reputation. In his pursuit, Matt escalated criminal activities, even distributing weed to the crew for sale. Paranoia gripped Matt's mind as he concocted a sinister plan to eliminate Jared, fearing he might betray the crew. The twisted plot unfolded at the drinking hill, where Matt and Shane Myers attempted to poison Jared with Visine-laced beer. The failed attempts, initially discouraging Matt, only fueled his obsession with eliminating his friend. It's essential to note that Matt, consumed by his mafia fantasies, even began dressing like a mob boss. With a wardrobe inspired by cinematic dons, Matt's appearance reflected the dark transformation within, as his desire for power and control reached ominous heights. The arrival of a new member, Shane Johnson, into the crew marked a turning point. Matt's fixation on violence and dominance resurfaced as he bonded with this supposed tough guy. Their discussions about eliminating Jared set the stage for a nightmarish turn of events. Johnson portrayed himself as a skinhead, a member of a KKK offshoot, embracing a criminal persona. This new alliance reignited Matt's desire to commit a heinous act. Hours of plotting unfolded, leading to Matt ordering the crew to dig a hole, drawing inspiration from movies like Casino and Goodfellas. Reports suggest that Jared, after a day of heavy drinking at the drinking hill, became the unwitting victim of their macabre plan. Matt, Johnson, and the Myers brothers coerced Jared into believing they were going off-roading. Deception hung in the air as tequila was passed around, and a sinister plot unfolded. As Jared went to take a drink, Johnson tased him over his heart. An annoyed Jared retaliated, but the night took a dark turn. Shane Myers struck Jared with a tire iron, revealing the ominous purpose behind their actions. The desperate struggle for survival began as Jared, realizing the danger, pleaded with his friends. As the night unfolded, Matt wielded a shotgun, sealing Jared's fate with a shot to the chest. In a gruesome act, Matt finished him off with a shot to the head. The Myers brothers, witnesses to this horror, were coerced into digging a hole. 
Matt, driven by a twisted desire to erase any trace of his crime, mutilated Jared's body and burned his clothes. The Myers brothers returned home while Johnson stayed with Matt. Back at Matt's house, a disturbed scene unfolded. Casino played on the screen as Johnson vomited, and Matt smoked cigarettes with an intensity that mirrored the darkness within. Days turned into months, and Matt's descent into paranoia and further homicidal fantasies continued. The discovery of Jared's body by hikers marked the beginning of the unraveling. The police, armed with the list of Jared's friends from his grieving mother, pursued justice. The crew's facade of innocence crumbled as the truth surfaced. Matt, once the mastermind, now cowered in his shower, reverting to a childlike state. The legal aftermath saw Stringfield sentenced to six months, Cody Myers to voluntary manslaughter with a five-year term, and Shane Myers receiving 25 to life for first-degree murder and kidnapping. Johnson pleaded guilty to first-degree murder, earning a 20-year-to-life sentence. Matt Baker, the orchestrator of this heinous crime, received 35 to life for murder with a deadly weapon and kidnapping. Now into the chilling case of Chester Allen Poge, a young man whose life was brutally cut short by the unfathomable betrayal of those he called friends. Chester Allen Poge, a teen from Spearfish, South Dakota, found himself entangled in a nightmare when he crossed paths with Daryl Hoadley, Briley Piper, and Elijah Page. Little did he know that this encounter would lead to his unimaginable demise. The case began as a missing persons case in March, 2000. Dottie Poge filed the report with the local police because her son, Chester Allen Poge, was not at home and her car was also missing. She also reported that various items had been stolen from her home. The teen's body was found a month later after a landowner located it in a creek on her property in Higgins Gulch in the Black Hills. When detectives came to the scene, they found a white male wearing only a T-shirt, shoes, and socks. The coroner determined that the victim, identified as Chester Poge, had been stabbed, beaten, and his skull was crushed with a blunt object. It appeared that he may have also drowned. The injuries inflicted upon him were administered over the course of several hours before he finally took his last breath. Police investigators immediately zeroed in on Briley Piper, who was back in Alaska. He told detectives that he and two other friends, Daryl Hoadley and Elijah Page, met up with Chester Poge at his home, where they played video games. At some point during the gameplay, they decided to leave the home and tricked Chester into leaving with them and driving his car back to where they were staying. Court records show that when they arrived, he was held at gunpoint and told to get down onto the floor, where he was kicked in the head and left unconscious. When Chester Allen Poge woke up, he found himself seated in a chair with a cord wrapped around him. Briley Piper, Daryl Hoadley, and Elijah Page made him drink a poisonous mixture made with pills, beer, and acid. As he begged for his life and asked why they were doing this to him, Poge was repeatedly struck and taunted. The trio of killers then drove Chester Poge to the woods in Higgins Gulch, near Spearfish, where they made him strip down to his undershirt, socks, and shoes. Standing in 12 inches of snow in the heavily wooded area, they beat him and laughed at him for hours. Then, they attempted to drown Poge several times. At one point, he tried to escape, but was unsuccessful. The torture didn't stop there. Chester Allen Poge was so desperate for warmth that he begged the deadly trio to let him get in his car, where he could turn on the heat. Instead, they dropped huge rocks on top of his head and left him in the icy creek, where he stayed until he finally died. The former friends received severe sentences for their crimes. Daryl Hoadley was sentenced to life in prison, while Elijah Page was executed in 2007 after discontinuing his appeals. 
Briley Piper awaits execution on death row. Before his execution, the tragic tale of Chester Allen Poge serves as a haunting reminder of the fragility of trust and the depths of darkness that reside within the human soul. As we reflect on his story, may we be ever vigilant against the shadows that lurk in the guise of friendship, lest we too fall victim to the ultimate betrayal. In the concluding chapter of our Friend Turned Foe series, we delve into the tragic tale of Jason Sweeney, a young construction worker from Fishtown, Philadelphia, whose life was cut short by the callous actions of his peers. Jason, born on July 29, 1986, found himself entangled in a web of betrayal at the tender age of 16. A promising young man with a job alongside his father in construction, Jason's life took a dark turn when he encountered Justina Morley, a 15-year-old girl he was romantically involved with. Little did he know that Morley had orchestrated a sinister plan, luring him to The Trails, a wooded area near the Delaware River where his supposed friends lay in wait. Among the assailants was Edward Batzig Jr., Jason's childhood best friend, and the Koya brothers, Nicholas and Dominic, former friends who had severed ties with Jason. In a savage attack fueled by envy and resentment, they subjected Jason to a brutal assault, striking him repeatedly with a hatchet, a hammer, and a rock until he succumbed to his injuries. His pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears as the relentless onslaught continued, culminating in the crushing blow of a boulder to his head. The motive behind this heinous act extended beyond mere robbery, as forensic experts later surmised. It stemmed from a toxic mix of envy and resentment towards Jason's perceived success in life. Their callousness was further exemplified by their nonchalant demeanor following the murder, as they callously split the stolen cash amongst themselves and indulged in drugs and frivolity, devoid of remorse. The chilling details of the crime shed light on the depths of depravity to which friendship can descend when tainted by betrayal. Despite attempts to absolve themselves of guilt, the truth of their actions remains etched in the annals of history, a stark reminder of the consequences of betrayal and the fragility of trust. In the harrowing legal aftermath of Jason Sweeney's brutal murder, the courtroom became the stage for a poignant battle for justice as the fate of the perpetrators hung in the balance. Justina Morley, a central figure in the tragic saga, found herself at the center of a contentious legal dispute as her attorneys fervently argued for leniency in light of her troubled past. Describing a tumultuous journey marked by depression, substance abuse, and repeated suicide attempts, Morley's defense sought to portray her as a victim of circumstance, grappling with the demons of her own inner turmoil. Despite impassioned pleas for a juvenile court trial, the prosecution vehemently opposed such leniency, emphasizing Morley's purported role in orchestrating Sweeney's murder. Citing her previous failed attempts at rehabilitation, the assistant district attorney argued for a harsher sentence, highlighting the gravity of Morley's actions. In a pivotal legal ruling, the judge sided with the prosecution, ordering Morley to be tried as an adult for murder. Faced with the prospect of a lengthy prison term, Morley ultimately pleaded guilty to third-degree murder in exchange for her testimony against her co-defendants. Meanwhile, Dominic Koya, Nicholas Koya, and Edward Batzig Jr. faced a separate legal battle, charged with first-degree murder and a litany of related offenses. As the trial unfolded, jailhouse letters offered a chilling glimpse into the twisted psyche of the defendants, with Morley's correspondence serving as damning evidence of her alleged manipulation and callous disregard for human life. Despite attempts to deflect blame onto Morley, the confessions of the three defendants laid bare the brutal reality of Sweeney's murder, leaving little room for doubt regarding their culpability. As the legal proceedings drew to a close, the prosecution's case stood on firm ground, supported by a wealth of incriminating evidence 
and the damning testimony of the defendants themselves. In the end, justice prevailed as Dominic Coya, Nicholas Coya, and Edward Batzig Jr. were convicted of first-degree murder, facing mandatory life sentences without parole. As for Justina Morley, her eventual release from prison in December 2020 marked the conclusion of a tragic chapter in her tumultuous life. Yet the scars of her past deeds serve as a haunting reminder of the unfathomable depths of human depravity.